Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Sad Onion. As always, I am your host, Vasse, and today we are going to make sugar potatoes. This is based off of a Pro Box Studio, I guess, streaming joke. Um, Kate made her own version, so I thought, hey, I know how to cook, I'll make mine. So, as you can see, we have a pan here heating up. We're not just going to do sugar potatoes because we're not going to just eat, you know, basically caramelized potatoes. So I'm going to make a bit of a pot roast to go along with that. So we're going to let that cook and brown on both sides. And then I'm going to throw it in with some seasonings and onion and garlic. And we will have our, I guess, meat dish to go along with this. And then, you know, we'll take the sauce out and reduce that down to a gravy so that we can have, you know, full, full course meal, I suppose you could say. Not really a full course meal. That, that comes later. So we just want to brown this on both sides. We're not really interested in uh, really seasoning this. This thing's going to soak and cook in a crock pot, which I have off camera. We'll move the camera for probably four to five hours so that it gets nice and tenderized. So we're just really going to just be trying to brown it on both sides. Nothing, nothing fancy. And a part of me wants to save these juices, but what I might just do is uh, get a, a bit of the sauce when it comes time to make the potatoes and uh, do that and kind of make like a meat caramel like I've done in the past with other dishes. So we're going to get that little bit too. But it should, should come out pretty well. So usually what, what I do with sad onions is I usually, you know, make dinner. You know, everything you see on here gets eaten for the next couple days because at this point, it's just like, what do I want to eat for dinner? Well, what do I want to do for sad onion? Okay, let's just roll with that. And I do. We'll give this one more flip. Ooh, Probably should have something better than a spatula for that. Anyway, we just want to get it nice and browned on both sides so that it keeps the flavor in. I would suggest doing this for all of your stewed beef as well. Just, you know, structural integrity and all that. Okay, so that's probably good. So we will be back when we actually do the crock potting. So we'll be right back. All right, so we have our other ingredients. That's just some diced garlic, some ginger, some Worcestershire sauce you can see down there. And that's in a little bit of mustard powder actually I threw in there as well. So we're just gonna let the meat go with all its juices. There we go. And I'm gonna go put this down over here. Awesome. And then we're gonna just open up our broth. And then we're gonna let that go essentially. And we're just gonna let this sit and slowly kind of marinate. And we just wanna make sure that um, all of that is covered. We might have to move it around a little bit, but there should be enough, enough juices to essentially cover everything if we're clever about it. And here we go. All right. Yep. Yeah. So, um, it's freezing cold. So that is our main meal. There we go. Just getting everything kind of combined since there's a lot of powder down below there. So we're basically making a pot roast dinner. Um, which is good. So, we will be back to the second step here in a little bit with a little bit of movie magic. Alright, so we are back. I just wanted to show you guys the potatoes and you don't need to see me boil potatoes. I'm just going to boil them until they're a little bit soft. So I have a smaller and smaller in comparison to most people's hands. I've got small hands. Uh, white potatoes. They're a little bit sweeter and uh, they will boil, you know, pretty well. We're going to peel them after we cook them. You don't want these to be like super soft and squishy and then we're going to cut them in half and we'll do that 
you know, when we get to that process, I just want to show the size of them. So make sure they're smaller. The russet potatoes are just not sweet enough for for this. You want a sweeter potato. So if you want to use sweet potatoes, this would actually work really well, I think, with sweet potatoes too. I hate sweet potatoes, so uh, we don't use them. Uh, so we will be back. And oh yeah, clean them off the potatoes, obviously. Uh, remove any of the eyes. You don't want judgmental potatoes. Don't want them staring at you while you boil them alive. So, uh, this is almost to a boil. It's so strange not being in a high altitude anymore. Uh, things go so much faster when you're cooking. Although high altitude cooking, in my opinion, is the best cooking. It taste, makes things taste different. It's a fact. Look it up. It's called science. Alright, so we'll be back when we actually get to the caramelization of the potatoes. Alright, so we are back. So I'm going to melt the butter. And then I have our potatoes here, which I toss with a little bit of sugar. And we are going to let basically these fry a little bit and caramelize the outsides. Um, the recipe called for me making basically a caramel sauce, but um, we're going to do a slight deviation because that actually doesn't sound like it's going to be that tasty. Um, so. This should work. I've never done anything like this before, believe it or not. <laughs> sweet potatoes. I hate actual sweet potatoes. So, now that we got that up to a pretty nice fry, we're going to throw in our potatoes. We're going to let them just kind of caramelize and fry. And as you can see, they, they kind of fell apart. And they have enough sugar on the outsides that they will they will caramelize. So that's basically what we're doing. So yeah, we're just lightly caramelizing. They don't they don't have a lot of sugars on their own. They're not like say a sweet onion or anything like that that can do this without the assistance of some outside sugar. Yeah, car caramel plus potatoes. I don't know. It kind of sounds. Gross, doesn't it? There we are. Right. Let's give these a slight fry. And if we need to add a little bit more sugar, we can we can do it as they fry. But I think there will be enough. Um, in theory, it doesn't sound like it would be terrible. I like caramelized onions. These aren't quite, you know, onions. But um, we might need a, a fork to help us out here to flip some of these. That should work a little better. Yeah, I just, I just gave them a light tossing and some and some granulated sugar, and we just boiled these. There we go. So we'll just get a nice fry on the outside with a little. Yep, you can actually see the sugar. There we go. I'm happy to say that. I don't know how easy it is to out see. It's been a long time since we've actually fried anything. So, that, just flip over. Okay, we'll double. They're slippery, little buggers. There we go. That's actually working better than I thought it would. And again, if, if, we're, if they're not caramelizing enough, we can add a little bit more sugar, but I just didn't want these to be too sweet. I watched Cat Kate, sorry. My, my, my sister's name is Cat. I get the two in my brain a little confused. Uh, I saw her version, and it's basically like a sweetened porridge made with potatoes instead of corn. It doesn't look like it'd be too terribly bad. That should be more than enough. Didn't really get it on that side, so here. There we are. That, oops, probably too much on that, but uh, that's okay. And then I will do the, the gravy. There we go. That looks, that looks like they're supposed to. I am quite happy with how these came out. They're Danish, apparently. Which means they can't be older than the age of explorations, but apparently... Ah! I'm just kind of cleaning my spoons off. 
The fork sauce. These are forks. That doesn't taste too bad. I am going to throw in some seasonings because this is how we do it said onion. Do, 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 do. And a little bit. That was uh, some cumin. And some mustard powder. There we go. This otherwise, these are going to be just kind of bland and gross. So. Oh, yeah, those look actually pretty legit. Um, so. And I think I overcooked the potatoes. I think they're supposed to be a little softer than this. But these things were only in their their broth water for like yeah, those look really really good actually you guys can see hopefully there we go um, they kind of are getting nice and toasted there's just essentially fried potatoes all right so i think those are good to go i'm going to put them in a plate and then i will make the gravy on camera so We'll be right back. We're gonna make a quick gravy here. So I'm just gonna slowly add some of the sauce. This some of the onion. And deglaze that pan a little bit. And this has all the sauces and all of the all right, all the seasonings and all of that extra blood and fat from pork or the beef roast. Plus some of those nice onions. So we'll make a nice gravy out of all of that. I think one more spoonful. And we can reduce this down. One more. Okay. So we've just made like a nice onion sauce, basically. And we will throw in some arrowroot powder to thicken that up a little bit. And I think that will have the makings of a nice nice gravy here, so just give that a nice, get all the burnt bits at the bottom. It'll make a nice sweet gravy. It'll be definitely a sweet gravy. We want to boil that on high until that reduces down. So this is gar uh, garlic, and you can even see the bits of garlic, and mustard, and cumin, and ginger. I might need to actually add some more arrowroot powder because it's it's a little old. I'll just drizzle this on our beef and potatoes, and that should be enough. I need to go and buy more arrowroot powder. It's, it doesn't have a great shelf life. Boil that. We should have made a roux, but plus it's got all that extra fat from the butter that's in there and some potato starch too, but not a whole hell of a lot. So we're just going to reduce this down into a nice sauce. It doesn't have to be a gravy, but you know, just a bit of an au jus for some additional flavor. And we'll just let that sit and boil, and we will be back with uh, the completed meal. All right, so we are back. I'll try to talk a little bit louder. I noticed that the last couple were kind of quiet, so just be able to see the thumbnail. A little bit of salad on the side would make this dish look a little bit more presentable, but uh, I'm going to try the meat first because that's not really what we're here for. We're here for the sugar potatoes. So I'm just going to, and it came out nice and tender. I'm still using a knife just in case, and we have a little bit of that, um, that gravy on there. So, here we go. Making out great. 
it's hard to screw up um, a, a pot roast, basically. Onions are nice. Just a little bit extra flavor. Nice garlic. Definitely can taste the ginger. Um, here's the small piece. So here goes nothing. We'll try this. I haven't tried them off camera. It's got a nice crunch to it. Let me try a, a bigger piece. This one's had a little bit more time to soak up the, uh, the sauce too. And we made. Mmm. All those flavors complement themselves really well. Now it a little crunchy, and that's really nice. Mmm. I didn't think it would work out that well. We'll try it all together. This is what we do. This is really good. A bit more of a hassle than what I'd want, but apparently this is for like special occasions. So, um, we'll see how it pairs with actual meat in your mouth. This is just a party, you know. Eat this in winter. Not eating it here. That really pairs well together, though. Mmm. I don't know about Kate's sugar potatoes, but these are really good. I would give these a thumbs up. So it's a flavor and a texture I've not really ever had with potatoes. But, um... It's not one I'd shy away from, and I really wasn't expecting much, so... You can do a lot worse with something called a sugar potato. This has been Sad Onion, as always, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for watching. Bon appetit.